What an awful day. I usually eat the deep onset of dread as I question my life choices for breakfast, with a side dish of unspeakable terror. Yet, on the subject of Wednesday, I was in hell. Not pleasant regular hell, the video inspiration kind. Then, a horrible thought occurred, and by that I mean a great one. Thank you, Thing. The Adams Family are so iconic they barely need introducing, especially now with the recent success of the Netflix series Wednesday. A macabre family born from the twisted mind and dark humour of Charles Adams, whose gothic allure contrasts with the pastel conventions of normative American life that surrounds them. But when did their family values of sword fighting enter the equation and what does it mean? In Charles Adams' original cartoons of the family for The New Yorker, there don't seem to be any swords, except maybe as house decor in the background which I can relate to. Nor is there much characterization around the family members' personalities, or possible hobbies including sword fighting, aside from their general love of the macabre, which landed well and was impactful enough for Adam's one-page dark humour gags. Although the cauldron of boiling oil about to be poured on unsuspecting carolers could be a tribute to medieval siege warfare tactics fun for the whole family. But maybe it was only a matter of time before swords were introduced one way or another, because Charles Adams himself seemed to be quite a fan of the concept of weaponry in the home, and posed for his portrait in full suit of armour. And maybe that did influence the fact that when the 1960s television series adaptation of The Adams Family happened, not only did the characters all get names and personalities, but they also got swords which the parents Gomez and Morticia regularly partake in together as a fun couple's activity. As you do. <laughs> Seriously, as a sword fighting practitioner, I don't really find anything wrong with that. And in many ways, this bit of lore ends up being a constant throughout other adaptations, which makes sense for fencing in particular for a range of reasons. One of the pretty constant characteristics of the Adams family is that money is never a concern. It's not really clear if they're upper class, but they definitely have that vibe to them. And fencing definitely carries the same vibe, no least because of the concept of knighthood and feudal ownership trickling down into the idle, rich nobility, having the time and leisure to learn how to duel. And while fencing was popular enough in the 1960s at the time, it could still hold rich and aristocratic connotations for a general audience. This piece of sword fighting law also establishes that Morticia and Gomez sword fight together, and when she bests him, Gomez is an incredibly good sport about it, praising her skills like the adoring goth wife guy that he is. Charles Adams defines Morticia early on as the matriarch at the head of the family, who is muted but lethal, and she engages in activities that would appear as conventionally feminine, but with a twist. She embraces her femininity alongside power and equality in her relationship, and that elegance, combined with the inherent cultural challenge a skilled woman poses to the patriarchy, fits fencing perfectly. After that, the passion and romance that define Gomez and Morticia, alongside their respective heritage that is Hispanic, Italian and French that would be made only more obvious and clarified in future adaptations, especially when it comes to Gomez, and you've got yourself some fencing lore. This fencing law is only exacerbated in the 1990s film adaptations Adam's Family and the sequel Adam's Family Values, where this time Gomez is mainly the one who shows off his fencing skills and does come across as slightly more competent than in the original 60s series. But then again, in the films, it's worth pointing out that he does not have Morticia as his adversary. And we know from the sequel and the iconic tango scene that just like in the original 60s series, she knows how to throw a knife. But what the 1990s films do is also expand a lot more on the children and their interests, whereas the series was mainly focused on Morticia and Gomez. And this also shows us that Wednesday and her brother Pugsley do enjoy some sword fighting, especially when aligned with some Shakespearean drama and impressive, gory DIY special effects. The use of Blaze also further emphasises the Adams family's connections to a wider, eclectic European heritage, like in the iconic Mamushka or Dance of Brotherly Love dance between Gomez and Festa, which was, in the Lord film, taught to them by the Cossacks. Though still channeling the kooky, spooky creepiness of 
the series. However, the films do present a darker, slightly more defiant tone when it comes to the Adams family's attitudes towards the world around them, defined by their motto, Sic gorgiamus allos subjectatos nunc, or we gladly feast on those who would subdue us. The sword is still a symbol of a taste for the macabre and the violent, but while the Adams family still playfully use it among themselves, as well as other assorted blady objects, they are fully ready to turn it towards their enemies, should their welcoming nature, open-mindedness, and willingness to live their own life on their own terms not be reciprocated. The Adams family has always resonated with queer audiences for willingly subverting the status quo of what the typical heteronormative, gender normative American nuclear family is supposed to look like and behave like, with a twist that the mirror opposite of such a norm with the Adams family becomes a family that loves one another and embraces their differences while also accepting their normy neighbours, even though they can be intrigued and comically shocked by their basic ways. The Debbie pastels, and there's always an inherent flamboyance and campness that only enhances the queer message of the franchise as a whole, which I think the flamboyance and inherent campness of sword fighting only adds to. This brings us to the current iteration of The Addams Family, centering of course on Wednesday in the 2022 Netflix series, where fencing is seen as a natural extension of her personality, as Jenny Ortega of Wednesday continues the legacy that Christina Ricci started in 1990s films by playing Wednesday as this ruthless, deadpan girl who you would absolutely expect to know how to sword fight, do archery, and hold her own in a fight. In fact, the very first episode of the first season gives us a fencing scene with Wednesday and one of her classmates, Bianca. I'm going to refrain from being too critical on the fencing scene, I think it was pretty good considering, though honestly, if you wanted your characters to fence steam without the whole electric wiring setup with no cap tips, and also fence in circle emotions, which is against the rules, and let's not even talk about the black outfit for Wednesday, that's not modern Olympic fencing. I will say though that not only did Jenny Ortega go through the effort of learning some fencing moves, the saber as a modern fencing choice for Wednesday is great. Saberus, you know why. You can be pretty intense. The fencing here serves dual purposes, or even tri trip trial, no, triple purposes. It's a three-edged sword. On one hand, it fits really well within the general atmosphere of the school, Nevermore, in which Wednesday has to find herself, which does come across as a pretty snobby, dark academia, kind of parody of a kind of British boarding school. I mean, they've got the rowing, they've got the archery, they've got the secret society, because fencing does still carry these connotations of elitism and inaccessibility, and is the kind of sport that you would expect this kind of exclusive school, nevermore, for outcasts to partake in. But the fencing here also serves dual purposes in terms of Wednesday's personality and wider family legacy. On one hand, it shows Wednesday's continuation of her family legacies, whether begrudgingly when it's revealed Morticia, her mother, was captain of the fencing team back in her school years, or when we find out that Gomez trained his daughter in the sport from the age of five, but it also highlights her own abilities to use this skill to defend her unique way of seeing the world and navigating it. Which, in this myriad of sword-based metaphors, raises another question. Could Wednesday possibly be a sword sapphic? After all, beyond the outsider themes that make the Adams family a queer favourite, many viewers have noticed her undeniable chemistry with her werewolf roommate Enid. Another example of TV writers making same-gender friendships far more compelling and complex, and therefore shippable, than the bland piece of wet cardboard standing in as a love triangle in the show between Wednesday and two guys who was so forgettable personality-wise, I can't even remember what their names were. And I literally rewatched some episodes of the show two days ago. Also, as the two actresses for Enid and Wednesday point out themselves, and they were roommates. And they were roommates. God, they were roommates. Which we can only hope that the two actresses actually being on board and seeing the same thing that many queer shippers are seeing means that the show might take some notes for a season two 
if a season two happens. I don't necessarily think this is a case of queer baiting because I'm not quite sure the show really necessarily teased at that happening, but Netflix did organize a promotional event called Wedness Gay, where different drag performers were invited to drag up Wednesday style. So it feels as though when you do an event like that, you are kind of implying that your show is going to have queer themes, but maybe that's just me. When it comes to the show Wednesday itself, I think it's lacking some of the camp kooky energy of previous adaptations and takes itself way too seriously for what is ultimately a little bit of a flimsy, predictable plot. I think the biggest disappointment on my end is the fact that the Adams family works way less well when they're separated and is also somehow mischaracterized in this adaptation since there is this weird tension between Morticia and Wednesday that is literally not part of any other adaptation as far as I'm aware, but I have admittedly already rewatched part of the show, not only for research but also just to appreciate Jenny Ortega's brilliant performance as Wednesday and for enjoying the queer subtext that may possibly never become text. But let's wait till season two and see if Wednesday gets not only a sword but a girlfriend. That's going to be Cousin It for today, let me know what you thought of Wednesday the series and what your favourite Adams Family version is. You can have a look at my various swordy projects somewhere on the screen or below. Stay safe, sword lovers, and see you in another video. Je suis en train d'avoir un monologue interne à la Wednesday. Why, thank you, thing. <laughs> 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 thank you, thing. <laughs>